Hey, True Crime Besties. Welcome back to the Stay at Home Detectives podcast. Today, we're covering the case of Alyssa Turney. So let's dive right in. May 17, 2001 was supposed to be Alyssa Turney's last day of school at Paradise Valley High in Phoenix, Arizona, but the 17-year-old never came home. At the time of her disappearance, she lived with her stepfather, Michael Turney, and half-sister, Sarah Turney. She worked at the fast food restaurant Jack in the Box, and she did have a boyfriend at the time. Alyssa never came home, and all her family found was a note indicating she had run away to California. At the time, her younger half-sister, Sarah, was 12. Sarah was with Michael the day they found Alyssa's normally organized room in disarray along with a note that read, Dad and Sarah, when you dropped me off at school today, I decided I really am going to California. Sarah, you said you really wanted me gone. Now you have it. Dad, I took $300 from you. That's why I saved my money. Her stepfather, Michael Turney, who had adopted her, stated that he picked up Alyssa around 11 a.m. and took her out for lunch, where they had argued. When they got home, she stormed to her room, and he went out to run errands and pick Sarah up from her field trip. However, she had left her cell phone and other personal items behind. On May 24, 2001, Turney claimed that he received a phone call from a California number where Alyssa swore at him before hanging up. In 2008, Turney claimed that Alyssa was killed by two assassins from the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers and that she was buried in Desert Center, California. But Sarah did not believe the story. Almost immediately, she started a website to look for her sister, graduating to social media and finally to TikTok over the years, despite Sarah's best efforts. The case went cold until 2006 when a man confessed to killing Alyssa. The confession was a hoax, but it made the authorities examine the case again. By now, after no trace of Alyssa had been found, authorities began to look into the matter with a keener eye, suspecting foul play. In 2008, the police executed search warrants at the house Alyssa disappeared from and found a massive stockpile of weapons, firearms, and ammunition, including 26 pipe bombs. The Arizona Republic reported it to be the largest stockpile of explosives discovered in the Phoenix Police Department's history. Turney was arrested for having illegal explosives and sentenced to 10 years in federal prison in 2010, although he was released in 2017. In June 2019, Alyssa's half-sister, Sarah Turney, who was only 12 in 2001, began a podcast called Voices for Justice that explored Alyssa's disappearance and the subsequent police investigation. She drew upon over 3,000 pages of public release notes and case documents from the Phoenix Police Department. In April 2020, Sarah began posting about the case on TikTok, garnering millions of views. After over 30 episodes about Alyssa's case, in January of 2021, the podcast transitioned to covering other murder and missing persons cases in order to not jeopardize the ongoing investigation into Alyssa's case. The growing interest in the case, as well as some new evidence coming to light, made Phoenix police submit Alyssa's case to the prosecutor's office for charges against Michael Turney in June 2020. On August 19, 2020, a grand jury indicted him on one count of second-degree murder, and Michael Turney was arrested the next day, which Sarah gladly announced on her social media channels. In a recent update, as of July 2023, nearly three years after his arrest, 75-year-old Michael Roy Turney went on trial for second-degree murder in Phoenix, Arizona. He was charged in connection to his 17-year-old stepdaughter Alyssa Turney's 2001 disappearance. After opening arguments on July 6th, Sarah Cherney, Alyssa's half-sister and Michael Cherney's biological daughter, took the stand. Her emotional testimony included the ways in which she said she had seen their father criticize Alyssa. On the second day of her testimony, Sarah Cherney said that when she asked her father what had happened to Alyssa, he told her that he would tell her on his deathbed. That's disgusting. Wow. The state rested their case on the sixth day of the trial, Monday, July 17th, after two days of testimony from Detective William Anderson. At that time, Michael Turney's defense attorneys, Jamie A. Jackson and Olivia Hicks, submitted a motion to the judge for an acquittal, citing Rule 20 of the Arizona Rules of Criminal Procedure, which states that the court must enter a judgment of acquittal if there is no substantial evidence to support a conviction. Defense attorney Olivia Hicks argued that the state did not present any physical evidence that Alyssa attorney is dead and their client caused her death. In response to the defense's motion, Deputy County Attorney Vince Imbordino told the judge that Alyssa Cherney had been a 17-year-old girl with family, 
friends, prized possessions, and she would have been in contact if she had been alive. Two of Alyssa's siblings, Sarah and James Turney, released a statement on Sarah's podcast, Voices for Justice. Speaking on behalf of their brother, Mike, they expressed their gratitude for all the support they've received throughout the years. While, of course, this is not the result any of us wanted, we're grateful for the Maricopa County Attorney's Office for taking Alyssa's case to trial, Sarah Turney said. They thank the detectives from the Phoenix Police Department and the nonprofit organization Defenders of Children. They also thank the true crime community. You became Alyssa's army and surrounded us both with love. I will never forget that, Sarah said. She also addressed her sister Alyssa directly. I love you and I'm sorry, she said. You moved mountains to protect me from the reality of our lives so I could have the best childhood possible. That is something I can never repay you for. I just hope you know that I tried and that you deserved so much better. James echoed Sarah's sentiments. Like my sister Sarah, my brother and I want to extend our thanks to all of you who have contributed in the process of trying to find justice for our sister Alyssa, he said. This would not have happened without your dedication and support. As of September 2023, Alyssa's body has not been found. I feel like we need to do a part two on this because I'd like to know more about Michael Cherney and like his case of why he had all of the explosives and... I don't know. That's all weird to me. And then telling Sarah that he would tell Sarah on his deathbed what happened to Alyssa. Yeah, that's like a huge red flag. That to me tells that to me says, hey, I'm guilty. I did something wrong and I'm going to tell you on my deathbed so I don't have to take accountability for my actions and what I did. And the case was just dismissed. And it's so summer of this year, only a couple of months ago, which is crazy. It is crazy, but the problem is, is they never found her body. So they don't have that to present in court to successfully have a trial that would potentially convict him, hence why he, why everything was dismissed. But you're right. I want to know why he had all of those explosives. Like, what was the whole backstory behind that? Maybe digging a little bit deeper into that case, because that's a separate case, Mm -hmm. aside from Alyssa attorney. But it's just so strange to me. Like, I feel like there's so many more pieces that we're missing here. Yeah, there's, there's a lot that's still missing. And then that supposed phone call and, you know, I don't know. I just... You guys tell us what you think. I truly think that he had something to do with it. That's just my speculation on the entire case. Um, It's just weird, the red flags, and especially the deathbed comment. Yeah, Yeah. I just, I don't know. I feel so bad for for Sarah reading. That was heartbreaking. Like, I can't even, I can't even imagine how this poor 12-year-old girl felt and then sat there and literally turned to the internet to try and figure out what happened to her sister like exactly I know that was heartbreaking it made me so sad and thinking about it too I mean that shows a ton of resilience and on Sarah's part and the fact that she continued all these years to still fight for her sister and to keep her memory alive and not let this case get forgotten but it's still so sad because there's no justice there's technically is no justice because one, Alyssa was never found. They never found her body. I know, it's so sad. And so there's no closure for her siblings. You know, I'm also curious as to what happened to her mother. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Why was she adopted by the stepfather? We can we can do that when we do part two of this because I want to dig more into him and the explosives and what happened with, you know, court over over the years of when he was in jail also crazy that he's 75 years old like he needs to just be honest and tell Sarah what happened because who knows how much longer he has and what happens if something you know he he passes away I mean he's 75 years old say he passes away without giving that information then that's it the letter the letter doesn't make sense to me either none of it makes sense the whole case let us know. I remember seeing this on TikTok. I remember when Sarah did start this and I had come across this. This is when I first came across this case cuz obviously, you know, during 2020, 2021, you know, it was still COVID and everything yeah. was going on and a lot of people turned to TikTok. So I remember this. I would like to, you know, 
give a huge shout out to Sarah and, you know, her podcast with trying to find justice for her sister. Let us know if you've heard this case, what you think, if you guys have actually done your own research on this case, um, and kind of if you have any leads of where we can go for part two when it comes to Michael Cherney and, you know, his weird and scary background. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely strange. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. We're going to wrap it up here, but make sure you follow us on our social platforms. We are on Instagram. Our handle is SAH Detectives Podcast. So make sure to go follow us. We're also on Facebook at Stay at Home Detectives Podcast. And if you'd like us to cover a specific case or you have any ideas of future cases we can cover, make sure to email us at sahdetectivespodcast at gmail.com. Well, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.